What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. In today's video, we're looking at how to install soffit and fascia. There's a ton of videos out there that'll teach you how to install soffit, but in this video, we're gonna be looking at, um, let's say you're a DIYer who wants to install a high-end lifetime product. Maybe you're a uh, custom design and build firm looking for new products for your buildings, um, or maybe you're a contractor that has this panel in your roll former already and wanna know how to install it as a soffit for a different product, different application. What I've got here is a one inch flush wall panel. This is 24 gauge steel with a PVDF finish. This is a 50, 60 plus year product that we're gonna be installing today. One of the benefits of this profile is the variety of looks that you can get, especially if you're a contractor running it in your own roll former, um, because you have full control. Uh, in this panel right here, this is a 12 inch panel, and I've got a V-rib um, down the center of the panel. Let's say I'm installing this high-end residential application. I think 12 inch uh, coverage is a little large for a residential project. I've got this V-rib here to kind of break up those eye lines. You can also um, roll these with perforations and any combination of V-ribs, bead ribs, anything that your roll former will take. All right, let's get into the install now. This profile has a one inch rib height. It's got a tongue and groove locking system, which allows the panels to lay flush across the length of your soffit. You can also roll form them uh, to have a reveal as well. So there's a ton of different looks, as I mentioned. Basically, the way that we're gonna install this is I've got two by two nailers up between the lookouts on my rafters here. You can use any size lumber based on your project, but because I have a small mock-up, that's all I decided to use. I'm then gonna install a J channel along the perimeter of the overhang. The panel will slide into the J channel here. I'll pop one screw in, and then we'll attach the fascia once we go down the length. So let's go check it out. All right, so after you install your nailers to make sure that you have something for your trim to hook onto, um, I've got this custom piece of J channel here, and this is a one inch gap here between the cover and the nailing flange uh, to match the rib height of our flush wall panel. This video I'm not gonna talk a lot about, like terminations and details and stuff like that uh, when it comes to the soffit install. I'm really gonna show how to install the panels, but for now I'm gonna prep this J channel. I'm gonna take some measurements and you'll kind of see how it goes together in a second. I did wanna shout out Warren Roofing um, in Ohio for making the trim for us, really appreciate it. I did pre-drill the trim and panels just to make it easier on myself when I go to install. All right, I got my long piece of J here. I've got it notched out and we are installing these while keeping in mind the direction of water flow. So this lap remains on the top. And then I'm gonna fasten this into the nailers that we've got here. One thing I wanna point out is we are installing on the gable end of the house here. If you're installing the soffit on the eaves side, you can do it with something like an F channel so you can nail horizontally into the wall sheathing, or you can use J channel on the eaves side as well, but you have to install another nailer that's level to your, your eaves side. Once we get this J channel installed, it'll be super easy to slide in the flush wall panels and then put a screw on the outside here of our fly rafter, which will turn into our fascia. And you do wanna be careful with this here because this will be the finish edge of the soffit. So here's what we're talking about. Um, here's our edges where we've got it lapped over. This is gonna be the finish side here. Uh, these two by twos are nailers, but you can see the nail flange is a bit longer than where I've got the lumber installed. Uh, but normally this would be flush here and then you could screw right up into those nailers. I'm not a carpenter. Don't come for me in the comments. Here's our laps here. All right, now we've got our receiver flashing installed. We're gonna go ahead and install our panels now. Um, it's very easy, they're just gonna slide into place. We're gonna put one screw here. Couple things to note. Uh, you wanna measure the length between your J channel, the inside of your J, to the end of the subfascia. And we're gonna use that measurement to get the measurement of our panel width. 
You also wanna subtract about a quarter inch for expansion and contraction. You're gonna to wanna to keep that in mind. Another thing to think about is subfaces are rarely straight. So what you wanna do if you have a long panel run is take measurements down the length of your roof um, and make sure that you're cutting your panels to the length that you get from your measurement. Don't take one measurement and cut them all. One of the benefits of the flush wall panel, if you're a contractor with your own roll former, if you have it on site, you can cut them as you go rather than cutting them all at the beginning and then finding out you're a half inch short on half the run. So I'm gonna take my measurement from the inside of the J to the outside of my subfascia here. It's 12 inches on the dot. I'm gonna subtract a quarter inch, 11 and three quarters. And that's what our panels are. So let's go ahead and slide them in. So again, tongue and groove here. So I'm gonna slide them into my J channel. I've got a J channel here, J channel here. Slide this in, just like that. Push it all the way into the edge here and then pull out about a quarter inch and then that will give you your expansion and contraction uh, space for that thermal movement. All right, let's put in one screw. Again, I've pre-drilled this hole to make it easier on myself. Don't over tighten your screws on your trim or your panels. It's just gonna cause oil canning all the way down. Nobody wants that. So then it's as easy as engaging the tongue and groove of the flush wall panel and then sliding it in along the receiver channel all the way down the roof. Again, giving ourselves a quarter inch for expansion and contraction. There we go. Here's an opportunity to check to make sure your panels are square to the edge of the building because we do have that quarter inch of give. We wanna make sure our lines are nice and square. So before I get to the end of the panel run here, I'm gonna give you another alternative installation method uh, rather than using the J. This is a standard practice when it comes to residential buildings, um, but on the Sheffield Metals detail when it comes to soffits, what they'll do is prescribe a screw here and a screw here, and then rather than having a J channel be the trim here, they'll have an, a piece of angle trim that kind of looks like this and then it gets slid up where the J channel is here and then riveted on. So rather than this being a structural piece to hold the, the panel in place, it then is just a finished piece. So the panel is actually screwed into two places. Um, so again, this is just one way to do it. Always refer to your manufacturer uh, for their installation instructions and requirements. So at the end of the panel run, all I'm gonna do is take a measurement from the inside of my J channel termination here um, and get a width of my final panel. Let's install our last panel and then we'll get the fascia on and finish this up. All right, I've got my fascia trim here. I've made a couple plum cuts. Um, I've also notched out uh, this bottom angle portion here. It's gonna go over top the bottom J, whereas at the top side of the J here near the ridge board, um, this is going to go underneath the J channel for proper water lap. Let's see how it fits. Again, underneath the drip edge of the existing roof, underneath this angle cut that I made on this J. The fascia trim is cut at an angle here, which will go over top of the J on this side. We wanna make sure that's as tight as possible. Again, this would be covered in a normal application, the ridge board, and I'm not gonna worry about the E fascia down here but this will kind of give you that final look uh, of the finished side of the flush wall panels, fascia trim, and angle trim or J channel, depending on how you've installed it. I wanna pop a rivet into the corners and then once every 12 inches or so, which for me is once per panel. Okay, that's one way to install soffit panels using the Sheffield Metals flush wall panel. A lot of different looks that you can get from this profile. Again, this is just one way to install soffit and fascia, uh, but there's many other ways. Make sure you follow your manufacturer's instructions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. Comment down below if you have any questions. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.